Sup. Take a trip with me. Let's head back to 2018 for a bit. We're at IAPA, or more realistically, we're at home watching everyone else at IAPA. IAPA is a huge convention mainly focused on amusement park stuff, and it's often where a lot of manufacturers announce new things. 2018 was no different. The coaster YouTuber we're watching decided to venture over to the Intamin table like the fanboy they are, and there they were hit with a bombshell. Not actually, it's a metaphor. Intamin was announcing not one, but two coasters for European parks. One of these would be Conda, a huge Intamin mega with a ton of airtime and fun elements. It has since opened and closed, and reopened and gained a ton of attention for its incredible ride experience. But with everything that has happened over the past few years with both coasters and the world as a whole, the second coaster has lost a fair bit of attention. I'll be the first to admit that the title of this video is a little clickbaity, but I honestly doubt that a lot of people watching this have seen this coaster in quite some time. With that said, the coaster I'm referring to will open in 2023 at Parc Asterix in France, and it will be called Tutatis. This is a giant modern Intamin multi-launch coaster, very reminiscent of something like Pantheon coming to Busch Gardens Williamsburg in a few months. I'ma just be real with y'all for a second. This thing looks absolutely mental. Let's dive in. With this segment of the video, I'm referring less to the backstory of the coaster's announcement and more to the theme. Normally I wouldn't cover theming since I mostly focus on coasters over here in America, aka we don't theme anything, but based on the few pieces of concept art we have seen, this is going to be worth mentioning. Tutatis is a Celtic god, once worshipped by ancient Gaul in Britain. He is widely known as a tribal protector, and to be real with you, that's literally all the information there is about this dude. Park Asterix must be better at researching than me though, because they took this theme and ran off with it to a wild, but really cool extent. The concept art pictures a giant statue of our old pal Tutatis at the entrance, probably to symbolize his protection of the tribe, or I guess the Q. Poor guy got kinda downgraded. Regardless, it does look like it will be quite the work of art. It is quickly followed by even more theming though, where we see some kind of wooden, covered path leading into a giant rock mound that will more than likely house the station. Which, by the way, looks awesome. Like, look at this. No, seriously, look. I mean, talk about theming. If this is actually what the entrance in queue will end up looking like, which to be honest I have no doubts that it will, this is sick. It is a very strange looking tribe, but who cares when it looks this cool? Besides, nobody has a clue who Tutatis is anyway. Okay, enough rambling about the theming, let's move into what really makes this coaster exciting. If you were around the coaster scene in 2018, then boy do you remember this. People were going absolutely bananas over the layout, and three years later, I can't blame them. The ride begins in the incredible station, and dips out into an underground trench that will probably be loaded with more theming. Hidden within the trench is the first LSM launch, taking you to what will probably be a pretty tame speed. The train pops out of the trench and navigates a whippy stangle dive before flying back up into the first inversion, a cutback. As far as I know, this is a first of its kind element for Mintman, so it will be interesting to see their take on it compared to RMC's. There's a pretty slow 180 degree turnaround following the cutback, and this is where it really begins to resemble Pantheon. Like, a lot. The train will pop up into two little outer banks, the exact same way that Pantheon does. The track dips into a little trench where we will find more theming, before popping right back up into the swing launch. Again, very reminiscent of Pantheon. Once on the swing launch, the train dips into a trench where the first acceleration will take place. It pops up into an airtime hill and back down slightly before failing to make it over the top hat ahead. Here you will roll back and accelerate more, going over the airtime hill faster this time. While going backwards, you will pass over the switch track that put you onto the launch, but instead of turning back into the first section, you will speed up a vertical spike. Once the train runs out of speed, it will fall back towards the ground and into the final pass over the airtime hill and launch. This time you will re-enter the top hat and actually clear it this time, with the front row definitely getting a load of airtime. Here at the highest point of the ride, 167 feet in the air, the train will enter what Intamin and Park Asterix are marketing as one of the selling points of the ride. 
I'm not sure how I feel about it, so I'll describe what it is and let you guys decide. Basically, the train hits some brakes, slowing it down immensely to increase anticipation. A lot like a dive coaster. I'm conflicted on this because on one hand, I think it will be pretty disappointing in the back row that you will lose some airtime. On the other hand, it will provide some really weird hang time for the rows towards the front, and the 101 degree drop is steep enough that the back should still get some airtime, even if it is an insanely powerful ejector. Share your thoughts on the anticipation stall down below. I think it's an interesting idea, and I am excited to see how it goes over. Following these breaks in the drop is a few very fast paced turns with a nice and whippy transition in between that lead into what is quickly becoming one of Intamin's signature elements, a giant spread out 0G stall. Coming out of this stall is a very intense looking turn and then what looks to be, in my opinion, one of the best parts of the ride. There's this little bump in the middle of the turn that may just give some absurd ejector, and I really think it could be bonkers. You will then fly up into a traditional ejector airtime hill and a twisted airtime hill before entering another one of Intamin's new favorite elements, a wall stall. Think of this as a wave turn without the wave, you just kind of float there on your side. I think this element has the potential to have some awesome interaction with the guests on the path underneath if done right. The wall stall will send you into a slower 0g roll that again could have some awesome interaction. Oh, and please do not expect this to be anything like Velocicoaster's roll. It is just a nice roll. Following the roll is one final whippy overbank before a double up that will give two nice pops of airtime before hitting the brakes, ending the ride. I honestly think this layout is a masterpiece. It feels like some insane hybrid of Conda and Pantheon, and I am all for it. But guys, look at this. There's gonna be airtime, laterals, positives, it is really quite the layout, even up there with things like Velocicoaster and Ride to Happiness. Tutatis is gonna be insane, and if anyone says otherwise, they are insane. The biggest issue that I see with this coaster is capacity, since it isn't very short and there really aren't any block sections in the middle of the ride. You might have to anticipate some long lines for this one, but oh boy will the wait be worth it. With all that said, this is the end of the video. Thanks for watching and I do hope that I was able to rejuvenate some love for this coaster in a few of you out there. I greatly appreciate the support of everyone still here, and yeah, that's about it. See ya.